Once upon a time, in a kingdom called Umarche, there lived a prince called Ikenga. Ikenga is a very handsome young gentleman whose gracious mind and heart has always been for the people and only for his people. He was loved and considered to be a strong, agile and masculine prince. The young ladies in the village always make it a prayer point to be his chosen wife. But one striking thing about Prince Ikenga was that he never had eyes for any of the girls. Until one day, the prince falls in love with a maid called Asa. Asa is a very beautiful and young maid that served in the palace. Her face glows all the time with brightness and beauty. Yes, it was love at first sight Prince Ikenga had for Asa. The first day he saw her singing and dancing while cleaning his bedroom was a great sight to behold. He was so struck with dumbness that his heart beat drummed severally all night. The following morning, he had professed his love to Asa and he had also found out that she had also secretly been in love with him. When everyone found out about their relationship, the whole village was in chaos. The king and the queen despised Asa so much because each time they tried to ridicule her, Prince Kinga always had her back and defended her. The whole villagers despised her but couldn't do anything about it because the prince was in love with her. Asa became the center of hatred in the midst of the young maidens in Omoachi. Anywhere she went to, she was stared at enviously. The prince Ikenga took their relationship to the next level by going ahead to propose marriage to her. The whole village was left in fury and aggression. They tried to stop the marriage, but Ikenga was so bent on marrying Asa. Some even concluded that she used charm on the prince. That is why the prince is so focused on her and so bent on marrying her. The king and the queen's hatred for Asa increased, but finally, the couples in love got married against everyone's wish. On the day of their marriage, the queen refused to attend the marriage ceremony despite the pleas from the king and the elders. After their marriage, one fateful day, Asa cooked a delicious meal for her husband Ikenga. She set the food on the table and went ahead to call on Ikenga. Prince Ikenga came out looking all happy and blooming with smiles because his queen had cooked for him. Asa stroked his hair while he uncovered the plates of pounded yam and igusi soup to eat. As he washed his hands, the queen walked past them, looked at them and hissed for no reason. Prince Ikenga shook his head and started eating his food happily. After he was done eating, eating he smiled happily and asa packed the plates she came back to the parlor and saw him sitting down watching some drama on the tv she smiled and sat down with him few minutes later prince ikinga started feeling uncomfortable in his stomach asa turned to him and asked if he was okay and he nodded signifying a yes few minutes later he started screaming and holding his stomach Ah, ah, my stomach. Asa immediately jumped up, looking all scared. Ikenga, what is wrong with you? Why are you like this? Eh, talk to me. She shouted as Ikenga fell on the ground and started vomiting blood. Oh my God, somebody help me. My queen, my king, she shouted, already in tears as she tried to wake Ikenga up. But he wasn't responding. At that point, the queen and the king, likewise every other person in the palace, ran to the scene. Blood of Jesus. Ikenga, what happened to my son? The queen asked, running towards where Ikenga had laid lifelessly on the floor. I don't know, Asa cried, trying to shake the lifeless Ikenga who was lying on the floor to wake up. Call the royal ambulance immediately, the king ordered. Within seconds, an ambulance arrived at the palace. Ikenga was hurriedly carried by the palace bodyguards into the ambulance. 
while the king the queen Asa and others followed crying the ambulance sped out of the palace heading straight to the hospital the prince was rushed into the operating ward where the doctors began their treatment a few hours later the doctor walked into the once bright royal palace now gloomy and sad reeking of total despair the atmosphere was thick with invisible smoke of sorrow no one needed to be told that something abominable had occurred the doctor entered and almost everyone jumped to their feet eager to hear what he had to say doctor what is wrong with my son the queen asked her face filled with worry and distress asa whose face had been covered with tears all this while immediately wiped her tears and stood up to meet the doctor as well doctor please how is my husband she asked her voice trembling the doctor sat down a grave expression on his face he cleared his throat and looked at their faces mm. he shook his head sadly the queen felt as if she might run mad at that point doctor talk to me what is wrong with my son please she begged i am afraid to say this but the prince was poisoned the doctor said everyone shouted in shock we found some poisonous substance in his food he continued and the room erupted in exclamation of eh and abomination arrow the queen screamed and cried suddenly she turned to asa who was also in shock and crying it is you yes it is you you fed him food last my son hasn't eaten anything other than your food since morning ha ah, so you poisoned my son's food she accused landing a hot slap on asa's face before she could respond ah my queen i would never do such a thing she cried you dare open your stinking mouth to lie to me who the hell do you think you are eh so you finally succeeded you finally succeeded in carrying out your plans eh asa eh chinekeo the queen cried why asa shook her head in defense no my queen i didn't do it i would never do it i would never poison ikenga my husband she sobbed you liar you better pray that nothing happens to my son if not if not asa you will have yourself to blame the queen shouted and walked out of the room the king looked at her disgustedly and walked out as well everyone else followed including the maids the guards the prince ikenga siblings princess ada princess ola and prince ozo i've never liked you ever since you became the crown princess of umachi but i never knew that you were this disgusting just like mom said you better pray that nothing happens to my brother if not princess ada said angrily before walking out prince ozo and princess ola did not say anything they only gave her stern looks before leaving asa cried endlessly she never imagined a day like this would come where she would solemnly be accused of something she never had a hand in every day she prayed fervently for ikenga's recovery pleading to god the gods of umachi and every deity she could think of her pain was unbearable she wanted everything to go back to normal she wished it was all a bad dream and that she would wake up soon but things only got worse when the royal doctor visited the palace the palace was steeped in sadness and gloom no one smiled and conversations were rare everyone prayed privately for ikenga's safety except for the one person harboring ill will the doctor walked into the palace finding everyone already seated in the palo waiting for him as he entered his unusual demeanor and appearance caused everyone's heart to stop momentarily doctor 
You said you wanted to tell us something. Please, what is it? We are all ears. The queen urged him. The doctor slowly shook his head. At that point, everyone's heart immediately stopped beating. Doctor, please talk to us. What is the matter? What is wrong with Ike? What is wrong with my husband? Asa stood up, tears already forming in her eyes. Hmm. The doctor sighed badly. He didn't know how to break the news. Doctor, the queen ran up to him, clutching his shirt. Please don't tell me it's what I'm thinking. She pleaded. I'm sorry, my queen. The doctor shook his head again, trying to fight back tears. The prince is no more, he finally said. Everyone shouted in shock. Some placed their hands on their heads. Others exclaimed, Allo, abomination, to fear Akwa. Why turning their hands over their heads and spitting on the ground? Asa couldn't believe what she had just heard. She fell on the floor in tears. The queen, upon hearing the doctor's words, was so shocked that she immediately had a heart attack and collapsed my queen my queen everyone shouted running towards her the people of umachi never expected something like this would ever befall them within a blink of an eye the crown prince of umachi kingdom was gone it was something like a dream to some folks and news had already spread round the whole village like a wildfire the queen who had succumbed on the floor slowly opened her eyes weakly. She was surrounded by different individuals as she was laid on the royal bed. My queen, how are you feeling? The king asked her, but she just looked at the doctor again and again and began to cry. Doctor, give me back my son. I beg you in the name of God, where is my son? She cried, stood up and looked at Asa. The next thing, she began slapping and hitting her. Provide my son for me. You killed him. You killed my son. You daughter of a nobody. You killed my son. I will make sure you rot in misery for the rest of your life. She cried while others tried to hold her from doing worse than that. Asa continued crying on the floor. Her eyes were so red that she didn't know where to start from to defend herself. She felt all alone. What sort of explanation would she give that would sound appeasing to the ears when all accusations were pointing towards her? She couldn't step her foot out of the palace. Her name was directly on the lips of all the villagers of Umachi Kingdom. Every woman detested her. Every lady and every elder were disgusted by her appearance. No one wanted to have anything to do with her. One day, the king called a meeting in the palace where all the elders were present. The queen and Asa, who was kneeling in the middle. You have done a very abominable act and you must be punished for that. The king said angrily, pointing at the crying Asa. But my king, I did not kill my husband. I would never do something like that. Asa wept. An elder slowly cleared his throat and spoke. My king, may you live long. He said. The king responded. I know that it is a very abominable act that has been committed in our kingdom. And the culprit must be punished. But just like the girl said, she did not kill the prince. We did not literally know who killed prince. I hope that drastic actions would not be taken when things have not yet been investigated and we end up regretting it later. I wish that we look further into this murder before doing anything, he said, and the queen stood up at that point. What other evidence and investigation do we need when it is so clear here that Asa is the culprit? She poisoned my son with her food. That is what the doctor said. She angrily sat down. Another elder cleared his throat and spoke. I think, your majesty, I would agree with what the queen just said. 
The queen had a point. Prince Ikenga was killed by food poisoning, as said by the doctor, and the only food he ate that day was the food that was prepared by his wife here, Asa. So I don't think we need any other investigation for this. He said, and another elder immediately shouted at him, Shut up there! Shut up there, chief! Why do you talk like a child? This is a very serious matter we are talking about here. This is the death of the Prince of Umarachi that we are talking about here, and not just anybody else's death. That is why the real culprit must be found and punished for his death. To avenge his death, let us not do something that will attract the anger of the gods or of our land, Bikonu. He said, and they all started arguing and raining insults on each other. You are the child here. You are very stupid for calling me that. No, you are the stupid one. The king got annoyed and hit his hand angrily on his chair. Enough, he said, and they all stopped bantering. Enough of all this rubbish. I am the king and I will make the final say. Asa, he calls and turns to Asa. You are going to stand before the gods of our land and make a swear that you did not have a hand in the death of the prince in three weeks. And before the three weeks, you will be treated and working as a maid that you were already in this palace before my son married you. But that does not mean that you will not follow the customs and traditions of our land for widows. I have said my words. He said, and that was how the meeting ended. Asa sat down on the floor and cried really hard. She wished Ikenga, the love of her life, never died. She wished she could avenge his death and bring out the culprit from wherever he or she was hiding. At that point, Princess Ada walked into the sitting room and saw her that way. She has always been the calmest of all the siblings and the eldest child. She bent down at Asa and wiped her tears. It's okay, dear. I know you did not kill my brother Ikenga. I know that you are innocent at the point. Asa raised her head up to look at her in surprise. That was the first time since Prince Ikenga died that someone would be telling her those words. The words she had yearned for severally but found none. She immediately started crying. Thank you so much, my princess. Thank you so much. I never knew that you would believe me, she said, and Princess Ada smiled and hugged her, suiting her to stop crying. The following morning, Adugo was woken up with noises coming from outside the palace. There were several women outside, singing and asking Ada to come outside. Your husband is gone, no, oh, you sorrowful woman that has nobody now. Come out so... Come and do the needful, oh. Come out and face the shame, oh. Come out and let's show you what we are made of, oh. Asa slowly cleaned her eyes and walked out of the palace to go meet them. When she went out, she saw them holding different razors in their hands. At that point, she immediately got scared. The women leaders saw her and they started making mockery of Asa by placing their palm on their mouth and making some mockery noise at her. She was dragged from where she stood to the center. They sat her down on the ground and looked at her scornfully. So, as per the customs and traditions of our land, we are going to be shaving out this hair of yours that has killed Prince. The woman leader spoke. I did not kill the Prince, Asa defended. Shut up, who asked you? Of course, culprits will never agree that they are the one until they are shown the other side of life. The women leader said and pushed her to the ground. Our prince lived for 30 years before he died. So we are going to be using 30 different razors to shave your hair until you go bowed. She said and Asa started crying and begging them to have mercy on her. But none of them paid attention. Give me the razor, the women leader commanded, and a razor was immediately given to her. Then she began shaving Asa's hair. Asa couldn't stop crying 
as she saw her precious hair fall from her head, scraped repeatedly with tarty razors. I didn't kill the prince. She kept saying, Shut up, who asked you? One of the women shouted. You think we will fall for your crocodile tears? We already know women like you. And to think that it is our gentle and handsome prince. You think we are going to take it lightly. You lie. Another woman said angrily, mocking Asa as she sat on the ground while her hair was cruelly scraped away. My dear women of Omachi Kingdom, make sure that lady lying there receives the best hair scraping ever. Let her feel the pain of how I lost my brother. Prince Uzo said as he walked out and saw the scene. Yes, my prince, they all bowed down. Prince Uzo turned to Asa who was sitting on the ground. You killed my brother, right? My one and only brother. I will make sure the gods of our land strike you to death soon. He threatened and walked back into the palace with all royalty and majesty while the women continued their torture on Asa. The following morning, Asa now reduced to the rank of a maid, woke up as early as possible, joined the other maids and started cleaning the whole house. She was assigned to clean Prince Uzo's room, so she knocked and heard a coming. She entered, finding Prince Uzo already awake and in the bathroom showering. She immediately started cleaning his room, bending down to dust the dirt from his table. Prince Uzo came out of the bathroom. Good morning, my prince, Asa greeted and continued her task. He only nodded and looked at her. While Asa was cleaning, she felt someone tickle her waist from behind. She immediately turned in shock and looked at him. My prince, what are you trying to do? She asked, stammering. Prince Uzo let out a silly grin. Come on, Asa. Don't pretend you don't understand. He winked, licking his lips. Asa shook her head. I'm sorry, my prince, but I do not understand anything you are trying to say. She said, Prince Uzo chuckled, walked closer to her. Asa, you know you are a very beautiful lady. I have always admired you before and after my brother married you. I always wanted you for myself, to have you on my bed and devour your sweet body. But you chose my brother and look where it has gotten you. He said, Asa shook her head in disbelief. My prince, I can't believe you are saying these things. I cannot believe these words are coming from your mouth. I am your late brother's wife, in case you've forgotten. Asa shouted. Prince Uzo immediately slapped her hard. And who are you to tell me what to say? Yes, you are my brother's wife, and that makes you my inheritance. Get that into your skull, he shouted. Asa shook in fear. Then he slowly calmed down and started stroking her face endearingly with a naughty smile. If you just agree to my request right now, all your worries will be over. I will talk to my people, marry you, and you'll be free from all these burdens, he said. Asa shook her head. Over my dead body will I do that to Ikem. Ikem was my only husband and will forever be my husband. Even though he is dead, he is the only one I have ever loved. I can never do that to him by marrying his brother. That will hurt his feelings wherever he is, she said. Prince Uzo immediately grabbed her back and she shouted, struggling to breathe. I could kill you right now if I wanted to, but guess what? I won't because I like you, he said, releasing a dirty smile. He pushed her to the bed and tried taking advantage of her. At that moment, Asa kicked him, pushed him off, and ran out of the room. Panting and sweating, she wished Ikem never died. She wished her husband was still alive. All these things wouldn't have happened. She ran into her room and fell on the floor, crying hard. At that point, Princess Ola walked into her room and looked at her from head to toe. My friend, will you stand up and make me food? 
what are you doing here when other mates are in the kitchen making breakfast she ordered asa immediately stood up and wiped her tears but my princess my work is just to clean and dust asa told her princess ola immediately slapped her how dare you talk back to me who authorized you my friend go to the kitchen make me food you are here telling me your work is only to clean and dust what is the meaning of that what does maid mean Ewu, she cursed asa slowly left in tears and went to the kitchen as she joined the other maids in cooking she never imagined that a day would come when she would be reduced back to being a maid when ikem had proposed to her she felt so loved and cherished that she never believed she would be pushed back into a maid like situation she was so happy and felt so blessed to have ikem in her life who would have believed that she would come back one day to where she had once begun she wiped her tears and continued cooking as she cooked she felt like poking the smells of the food struck her so badly that she suddenly ran out of the kitchen and into the bathroom she had been feeling very dizzy and ill these past few days her body felt different and she cried endlessly missing Ike more than ever she went back to the kitchen and everyone looked at her weirdly she only wiped her mouth and continued with her task days passed and the people of umachi continued their endless gossip torture and maltreatment of asa life for asa in the palace was worse than ever the only person who stood by her was princess ada who tried to suit her every time she cried in secret one day a loud yell was heard from the king's chamber everyone immediately gathered the king was extremely angry and looked like he could tear someone into pieces at that moment where is my staff of authority he shouted and everyone shook in fear i can't find my staff of authority he yelled they all looked at him in surprise and fear what your majesty you mean you cannot find your staff of authority the queen asked the king looked like someone who wanted to run mad i just said i cannot find it i cannot find what makes me a king which among you stole it you better bring it out now or else you already know the wrath of the gods when they are angry you better bring it out now or else you will face the consequences he shouted at the maids guards and everyone else but they all bowed their heads in silence my king i suggest we search everyone's room bags and belongings this is the only way to find it and the culprit wouldn't have gone far with it princess ada calmly said the queen immediately concurred i think i will agree with what my daughter just said she's right my king let us do a thorough search of everyone's room and belongings we might find the staff of authority the queen said the king nodded convincingly i think you both are right guards he called out and they all appeared bowing before him yes my king go and search all the rooms in this palace and bring me my staff of authority the culprit must be found he ordered and the search immediately began the guards started rummaging through all the rooms in search of the staff of authority until they entered asa's room they threw her bag on the floor emptied everything and the staff of authority lay there everyone's eyes widened in shock ah i did not steal the staff of authority i would never do that my king asa immediately went on her knees crying and begging shut up your dirty smelly mouth dear the queen ordered and asa cried while sitting on the ground how was she going to vindicate herself how was she going to prove her innocence everything was just moving from frying pan to fire instead of getting better asa held the king on his legs crying her eyes out my king i swear i didn't do it believe me can you hear yourself 
I should believe someone who killed my son. Tell me, are you not capable of doing this? You didn't do this, and you expect me to believe that. Then, tell me what the staff of authority was looking for in your bag. You must be stupid, the king said angrily. My king, I don't know. I don't know how that entered my bag. I really have no idea. Believe me, my king, she cried. Guards, the king called on the guards, and they immediately appeared with their knees on the ground and with a bow. Take her out of this palace and lock her up in the cell, he ordered, and the guards immediately did as they were told, and forcefully dragged Asa up from where she was on the ground. She kept on crying, and she was being taken away. My king, I swear, I did not do it. I did not. News already spread round the whole village like a white fire about Asa stealing the staff of authority. She was literally on the lips of every villager of Umachi. She was cursed, gossiped, and literally mocked at. While locked up in the small cell, Asa was starved daily. She was neither given water nor food to eat. Princess Ada would always sneak to where she was locked up with a tray of food in her hand. Asa would thank her and devour the food so hungrily, like a lion. Don't worry, dear. I know you are innocent, okay? I know that you did not steal the staff of authority. I believe you. She would always tell her, and Asa would feel like at least she had that one person to lean on in this world, even when every other person refuses to believe her and abandoned her. She felt so indebted. Until one day, Princess Ada was on her way as usual, sneakily going to meet Asa in the cell with a tray of food in her hand. When she saw Asa's body lying down unconsciously on the cold floor of the cell, at first, she thought it was literally sleeping, but when she shook her several times, and she never responded. Princess Ada immediately started screaming for help. Somebody help her. Oh. She has fainted. Oh. She screamed and immediately all the guards rushed in and lifted Asa up from the ground and rushed her into the main palace. Immediately, the royal doctor was summoned and after performing all the necessary tests on her body, he turned to the awaited people standing before him and broke the news she is four weeks pregnant he said and they all opened their mouth in shock the queen turned to asa who was just waking up and queried her who got you pregnant she furiously asked my queen it's obviously ikem's baby i have never been with any other man except for prince ikenga asa replied already in tears and you expect us to believe that you must be a joker, Princess Ola said. You better say the truth now. Who got you pregnant? Prince Ozo asked her. My friend, will you open your mouth and say something? Is it to lie? The queen said, advancing towards her and trying to hit her. But the king immediately bought in. Hey, that's okay, all of you. He ordered, and they all stopped their actions. In as much as I wouldn't want this to be my son, Ikenga's baby, we do not have any proof here. This could be Ikenga's child, and this may still not be his child. So, until the child is born, we will get to know, but for now, she will be released from the cell and brought back to the main palace, and she will continue working as a maid. The future heir of Umuachi kingdom could be inside there. Let's not do anything irrational, the king said and walked out. The queen, Prince Ozo, and Prince Ola all looked at her angrily and walked out. After they left, Princess Ada calmly walked down to where Asa was lying down and patted her on the shoulders. Do not worry. Everything is going to be fine, okay? I know you are not lying. It's obviously my brother's child. I mean you don't look like that kind of a person who would just go about sleeping with different men. She said, and Asa immediately busted out, crying so hard. Thank you so much, my princess. 
Thank you so much for always believing in me. Thank you, she cried, and Princess immediately drew her for a hug, patting her on the back. Princess Ada slowly walked back to her room. When she entered the room, she closed the door and looked at herself in the mirror. A call came into her phone, and she immediately picked up the call and smiled. It took you this long to call me, she said. You did really well. Well done, she told the person on the other end. No, my princess, I wasn't the one that poisoned the prince. Oh. That day, when I wanted to go out to poison the food after she had left, my skirt got hooked with a door handle, so much that I tried getting it off. Few minutes later, when I finally arrived at the scene, that was when the prince was vomiting blood. The person on the other line explained, Wait, you mean you were not the one that poisoned the prince? Then who did? Who wanted the prince dead as well? She asked, and all possible ideas ran into her head, but none were really seeming possible. She sat down looking very confused than ever. Asa was back to the main palace and finally resumed her work as a maid. The king only had mercy on her by allowing her stay in the palace and work as a maid because of her yet-to-be-predicted pregnancy. Unfortunately, that day, she was the one to clean Prince Uzo's room. First of all, she made a prayer to the gods of the land before knocking slowly on the door. When she heard a coming, she opened the door and walked into the cozy large king-size room. She saw Prince Uzo. He was sitting down on his bed, shirtless. He immediately let out a grin after he saw her walking. Asa only frowned her face and started doing her job without even greeting. Prince Uzo kept on smiling and licking his lips while staring at her as he cleaned the room. Suddenly, he stood up and walked over to where she was. He ran his hands through her bald shaved head down to her shoulders with a silly grin on his face. Why, Yoma? Why do you look so cute and very pretty today? He asked, and Asa turned to look at him in anger. My prince, please stop whatever you are trying to do right now. It's an abomination. I am your late brother's wife, and I'm even carrying his child for crying out loud. She snapped at him. And he angrily and violently pushed her to the bed. Who do you think you are to snap at me that way? So what if you are my late brother's wife? What if you are carrying his child? I desire you. That's all that matters. I like you. He said and started climbing on the bed. While Asa fearfully shifted backwards on the bed. Please don't do this my prince. Please I beg of you. Asa cried. But... Prince Uzo violently dragged her to the bed and took advantage of her. While this was going on, the door opened. Prince Uzo jumped up and started yelling at her, Get out of my room. You came here to seduce me. You tried to rape me. Ah, Asa, I never knew you were like this. And I want my brother. I want him. Oh, but he was so bent on marrying because of love. Now look at trying to seduce the prince of Omachi kingdom. He said and Asa's mouth flew in shock. What? She said. The queen walked into the room. I knew it. I knew it. So this is the kind of person that you really are. You killed my son Ikenga. You stole the staff of authority. Now you tried to rape my other son. Arro. Abomination. She exclaimed in awe. Asa begins to cry and beg. No, my queen. Don't believe him, please. He is lying. I would never do something like that. I did not try to rape the prince. Why would I even do something like that? Why would a woman want to rape a man? He is the one who was trying to. The queen immediately cut her short by landing her a very hot slap on the cheek. How dare you try to accuse the prince of Umachi kingdom for such a big crime? Of course, everything is possible with you. You can do and undo the doings of the doings. You are a very big sly 
and you are going to face the punishment for everything you have done she turned that and walked out while asa continues to cry on the floor prince uzo let out a wicked smile and also walked away in princess ola's room she's panting up and down in the room you mean you were not the one that poisoned the prince's food then who did she asked the person on the other line she was talking to on the phone wait i am not the only one that wanted the prince dead then who else she asked confusingly but my princess why did you want the prince dead so much the person asked and princess olama's face immediately changed to anger because i do not like him the day i confronted and told him not to marry asa he slapped me and went ahead to marry her she said releasing a very angry face but prince ikinga was your blood brother at least you should have thought of some other way to deal with him other than killing him the person said and the princess laughed out loud and shook his head releasing a smile you know what your job is just to follow instructions and not to interrogate me she said angrily and hung up then sipped through her glass of wine while looking into the mirror with a smack princess ada was sitting down in her room when a call came into her phone baby girl my princess my princess how are you doing the person asked and princess ada immediately smiled sure your baby girl is cool with everything like this this girl here is fine i've got everything under control you know she said smiling and laughed i believe you babe but wait so there is something you've actually not told me why did you hate the prince so much that you wanted killing him so bad i mean he's your brother right the person said and princess ada's face immediately changed to anger I've always hated he came right from little. The fact that he was the crown prince got me really mad. I meant why can't a woman as well become a king? This whole stupid tradition stuff just gets me so annoyed and angry. Must men only become king? Women too can also become king. That is why I plotted to kill him. But fortunately enough, someone else did the job for me and i am so glad about that then that idiot called his wife that dirty pig i actually tried to shift the blame on her i stole the staff of authority and put it into her bag so people would have enough reason to blame her for it came's death wow smarty but have you ever tried to look for the one who killed the crown prince well I was kind of confused and curious at first, but I don't care any longer. I mean, as long as Ikenga is gone, I do not have any problem at all. The next person I am going to eliminate is Prince Ozo. I don't just want men to be king. I want to become a king as well, she said. But you know that sounds impossible, my princess. The caller said, oh, please shut the hell up. If you don't know what to say, I will become the king. I must, Ada said, and angrily hung up the cell phone. She screamed and scattered everything in the room on the floor and screamed out loud in rage. Few minutes later, when she had finally calmed down, she opened the door of her room and walked out calmly. When she reached the parlor, she saw Asa crying on the floor she rolled her eyes and started walking towards her when she reached where she was she immediately released a calm and gentle smile it's okay dear stop crying i believe you i know that you are innocent of whatever they accused you of everything is going to be fine don't worry okay she calmly said and when asa saw her she immediately busted into another round of cry my princess she cried and princess ada immediately pulled her for a hug patting her on the back and suiting her to stop crying the king called a meeting with the elders of omachi after he had heard of the abominable act asa is said to have committed asa was in the middle of the ground 
while the elders and the king were sitting on their golden sofas and royal cushions. My people, I called you today because another abominable act had been committed by this woman sitting before us here. The king said, pointing at her, who was crying on the ground. This woman here did not only kill my son, the late crown prince of Omoachi kingdom. She also stole the staff of authority, but also tried to seduce and rape my second son, Prince Uzo, on his bed. The king landed and all the elders began to spit out and shout in our arrow to fear kwa, abomination. Ah, my king, I did not do it all. Oh. I would never do it. Prince Uzo, why are you lying on me? Tell them the truth. You were the one who was trying to rape me, not the other way around, please. She said, trying to defend herself. But the king immediately shut her up. How dare you try to accuse the prince of Omoachi kingdom? What an infantry. May the gods of our land strike that your filthy mouth there. The king said, and the elders immediately supported him. Who knows if the child you are carrying in your stomach is even our late prince child, since it's now so obvious that you've been sleeping all around with different men. One of the elders thundered and Asa immediately opened her mouth crying, Ah, my elders, my king, I would never do something like that. Ikem is the only man I have ever been with, she cried. Will you shut up that you're smelling and get him out? The queen who has been silent all along on her seat immediately stood up angrily. I forbid my late son's name from that your abominable mouth of yours. She turned out. Listen to me. Tomorrow is finally the day you will be swearing before the gods of our land. All your true colors will be open like an open field before the whole village. This meeting is over. The king angrily said and walked away. The elders and every other person that stood there began murmuring and spitting on the ground as they left. Asa sat on the ground crying her eyes out. Why was the world so unfair? Why was everything so unfair? Why wasn't anything working for her good? She thought as she cried. The following day, Asa opened her eyes looking gloomy and sad. She couldn't sleep all throughout the night. She was having series of nightmares and different kinds of dreams about her swearing to the gods of the land. She even saw her late husband in her dream and he asked her not to worry that he is always with her. It was as if those words she heard from Ikinga had built up something she couldn't explain in her. She couldn't wait for the swearing so she could swear to whatever they would ask her to and finally prove her innocence to everyone. Sometimes she would sit down and think on everything that had happened to her. Why was everything so bad and different? Why were different hands pointing to her with different accusations? Is it just something she couldn't explain? Or were they all a coincidence or what? She stood up from her position and immediately took her breath. After she was done, she walked out of her room and saw Princess Ola walking past her door. She immediately greeted her by bowing and bending her knees. But she didn't reply and just hissed and walked past her. Then she came back again. I can't wait for your swearing time so that the whole world would know the kind of person you are. She said, pointing her fingers at her and finally walked out. Asa just shook her head and went into the bathroom, picked a rag and started joining other maids in cleaning and dusting. Why cleaning? She was told that it was her turn to clean Prince Ozo's room. Why is it always my turn every time, eh? She murmured under her breath and slowly knocked on Prince Ozo's door. Come in, he said from the room. She opened the door and walked into the room. Prince Ozo looked at her and gave out a smile. What took you so long? Or were you probably thinking about, 
he stopped and Asa shifted backwards in fear. Don't you even dare come close to me, Uzo. She warned, looking for what she could hold and just smash it on his head at that moment. But nothing actually came to her head at that moment. Why? Why are you shifting backward? Do you think I'm going to hurt you? I am not. I am not a bad person. Or do you want to tell the whole world that the prince of Omoachi wants to hurt you? He asked, and Asa looked at him angrily. How could you? How could you, my prince? How could you lie against me to the people? Why are you so wicked? I am your late brother's wife, and I am pregnant. At least, if you wouldn't have compassion on me, at least show it to your late brother who is in the grave and his baby who is in my stomach. I am begging you, don't come close to me again in your life, she said, and he laughed. Oh, please, you are not even my type. And besides, I did not lie. Are you not a rapist? Didn't you try to rape me? How is that possible? How would I possibly do that? How can a woman rape a man? Doesn't that sound absurd to you? Does that even happen these days? She asked. Oh, you are throwing questions back at me, right? Anyways, that in your stomach is not my brother's child. I am sure of it. You are obviously a whore. That's why everyone can't help but believe me immediately. That is what we call power. He said and looked at her. Asa looked at him angrily. Uzo, you are a very wicked person, no? You behave like a good prince. But deep down, you are a beast in human form. I pray that wherever Ike's soul is right now, he will punish you forever till you die. She cursed and Prince Uzo immediately laughed looking at her. He stood up and started walking with a smile towards where she stood. You know one thing I like about you, your confidence and your bravery. Even when you are suffering, it makes my heart beat more for you. If you could just say yes to me, then trust me, baby girl, all your problems will be over. He said, running his hands through her face. Don't you dare touch me, Asa said angrily, hitting his hands away from her face. She tried opening the door to run away. But he immediately grabbed her and carried her to the bed. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. She screamed on top of her lungs. Uzo laughed. If you like, scream from now till tomorrow. Nobody is going to hear you. Because my room is soundproof. So no one will ever hear you scream there. He said lustfully, caressing her face, then bent down to smooch her neck. No matter how Asa continued to hit and punch him, he never relented but continued to have his way. While he was still on her, Asa saw something like a metal from afar and at that point, the only thing that came to her mind was to do what was in her mind. She stretched her arms to grab it and she hit him with the metal and immediately ran out of the room. Ah! Ah! Prince Uzo screamed, holding his head as blood started dripping down endlessly. He walked out of the room and the palace guards immediately held him before he would fall on the ground. My prince, my prince, my prince, wake up. The voice of the palace guards made the king, the queen and all the princesses, likewise the maids, run out of their places to the shocking and horrific scene in front of them. The prince was on the ground with blood flowing all over the floor. What happened, my prince? What happened to you, my son? The queen ran like a mad person to the scene. Her eyes flew in shock when she saw Prince Uzo lying down lifeless on the ground. What happened to my son? Who did this to my son? She cried. Call the royal ambulance immediately. The king ordered and few minutes later, the ambulance siren could be heard from outside as they drove in. Prince Uzo was immediately carried and hurried outside to the waiting ambulance. After placing him inside, the ambulance drove away. And with that, my dear friends, 
the episode one of this story comes to a close. But remember the magic of storytelling lives on, waiting to risk us away on new adventures where the wonders of imagination know no bounds. Goodbye for now, and may your dreams be filled with joy, wonders, and endless possibility. Thank you so much for watching. Please kindly comment, share, like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more interesting stories.